Take your place in The Coaching Lounge. Be inspired by discussions with motivational guests, compelling speakers, key people of influence and models of success. Learn unique processes, strategies and tips that will transform your life. Tune into previous episodes on www.thecoachinglounge.co.uk like our page on Facebook via The Coaching Lounge. Follow us on Twitter at Satellite Coach. Thank you for joining your host, Rebecca Gordon, in The Coaching Lounge. Tune in, relax, engage and transform your life now. 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 Greetings and welcome to The Coaching Lounge. I really appreciate that you've tuned in today and want to thank you and all my regular listeners for your support. This show goes out to an audience worldwide and I get such a thrill from listeners who email me to share just how much they enjoy these podcasts and benefit so much from them. Um, What I want to do before we start this interview with my guest is um, that I'd like to ask you for your help today. Not only do I want to hear your thoughts on today's show with my guest who I'll introduce in a short while, I want to know the topics that you want to hear more of in the coaching lounge. So please email me on info at satellitelifecoaching.com with your feedback on what you want to hear, you know, the type of guests that you want me to seek out so that you get the support you need in this space in the coaching lounge. So on to today's show. And the interesting thing about today's show is that unknowingly to me, the build up for this podcast started a few weeks ago, in fact, when I attended a meetup group all the way in London. And I say all the way in London because I live in Birmingham in the West Midlands in the UK. So traveling to London, which is about 200 and odd miles, is actually quite a trick. <laughs> Um, However, I'm a firm believer that if you really want to do something that contributes to your self-development, then distance needn't be a barrier. So I prepared and planned for the journey and I made the trek to attend a meeting that lasted for a couple of hours and I didn't actually get back home until just after midnight. And um, before meeting up and linking with my guest today, there's a crucial point to make here. And the point is this, from a psychological viewpoint, I sacrificed money and time to participate in this meetup event um, that was quite a distance away from my home. So I had to believe that it would be worth it. I actually had to put myself in the frame of mind that whatever happens, I am going to benefit from this. And whatever happens, I'm going to enjoy the experience and I'm going to learn something new that will make a massive and great difference to me and to my business. Well, needless to say, I'm pleased and delighted to say that this is exactly what manifested. So there is a key message here and the message is it's important to set the intention for great things to happen each day and show up. Make sure you show up in the world. And this attitude can add a new dimension to your life that would otherwise remain exactly the same if we become stuck in the comfort zone. So because of going to London and just participating in in a great event for two hours, this is what um, has resulted a call with my great guest so um, going back to that actual meeting it was a coachpreneur coachpreneur meetup um, that I attended I connected with amazing people and um, in particular um, there's um, another guest we're going to have on in a few weeks who's going to talk about um, an element of coaching and another guest who's going to talk about relationships but today I have Clive Maxheath whom I met at the meetup, at the Coachpreneur meetup. And I'm just going to tell you a bit about Clive and he'll tell you more about himself in a short while. But Clive Maxheath is a men's coach 
who specialises in working with groups and teams based in London. For over three and a half years, Clive has been running a coaching initiative called the Men's Action Project, or MAP, and he's also a fellow organiser of the Coachpreneurs Meetup Group. Not only that, Clive is a trained youth team leader who's involved in a number of career-based coaching initiatives. So I'm really looking forward to having a cosy, intimate chat with Clive Maxheath in the coaching lounge, especially because we're going to discuss the topic of men. (laughs) So you might just want to pause for a moment, make yourself a drink and settle down for the next 45 minutes as we explore the mind of a man on the topic of men. Clive Maxheath, welcome to the coaching lounge. Oh wow, Rebecca, the spotlight's on. (laughs) Absolutely, absolutely. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I've got some water here. I might need something a little bit stronger, I feel. (laughs) Okay. Well, Clive, before we get into, you know, the nitty gritty with um, what you do and what you're about and your great initiative, Clive, I've heard that you're a tough guy. Tell me about <laughs> tell me about the upcoming event that you're involved with. <laughs> I uh, yeah, a tough guy. I'm not a tough guy yet, Rebecca. <laughs> All right. Um, I um, I like uh, sports. Is one of my my major passions. Um, I like my training. And uh, recently uh, recruited a group of guys, some friends and some new guys as well. And we've signed up to do one of these assault course. Uh, like challenge things uh, in January, and the there's a few out there, but the one we've we've chosen is actually called Tough Guy. Right. So on yeah. the 31st of January, there'll be five brave souls heading <laughs> up to uh, well from London up to Wolverhampton to um, to take on this uh, this assault course. And so, yeah. but it, it's not just the, the 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 actual day itself. It's the it's the planting the let's say planting the a flag in the soil and, and saying this is something we're going to do and it, it's also there to motivate me with my training as well and right. we're going to we're going to schedule some group group training sessions as well that's but, excellent um, i can imagine yeah. there's a lot of preparation for that isn't there you have to be um fit holistically not just physically uh i think so yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> there's well, a video on the website that yeah. uh is pretty pretty telling but oh, um, right. no we've, we've had some emails through from him i've got uh I'll, I'll start digging around some training programs soon and and start start putting my head on it properly after the summer. Yeah, because I mean, it does require mental toughness, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, I'm getting married in a couple of weeks, though. So if I I'm, if I can survive, if I can survive <laughs> wedding planning, I can survive anything. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Okay, okay. So, Clive, um, it's important for us to get an idea and and the picture of your background and um, how you got involved in coaching. Please share that with us. Yeah, I sort of um, drifted into coaching through basically doing a lot of work on my own initially, um, which is sometimes and often the case with men. They like to, to work on their own. And um, I, in my mid-20s, I uh, went through a very difficult period in my life um, where there was a lot changing. Uh, I'd come out of university. I'd, I'd got into a job, but I was just going through the motions and... Uh, there was a, an incident where a member of my family, a very close member, my sister was very ill, and uh, I moved flat. Uh, I broke up with my girlfriend and just went through this, this quite dramatic time. And for about six months, it, I, I, I can't remember that time. I was barely walking the earth, especially with my uh, sister's illness that, that really was something that affected me. And she was she's younger than me as well, and um, she was in one of the, the hospitals uptown. Um, she's better now, thankfully, but at the time it really shook me to the bone and started me uh, asking deeper questions. And uh, I found the answers initially in a, a, a book called, about goal setting, and that brought some focus physic, uh, sort of externally. And, and then I also started journaling, uh, which is a practice I continue to this day to do some sort of self internal work, I suppose you'd call it. And that then led me into into basically personal development. I read a book called The Seven Habits of Effective People mm-hmm. uh, by Covey, which is which is a bible to me. I've just actually re-listened to it on audio, so I've sort of re- just re-anchored some of the principles there. And I I just got I was hungry, and I just started hoovering up a lot of personal development stuff. But probably for about four or five years, I was doing that on my own. Um, I went away, I travelled, 
And it wasn't until I took on a secondment with the Prince's Trust. I was a youth team leader for four months in a college in East London, which was um, both a very challenging but very fulfilling experience that I, I kind of found myself naturally relaying a lot of my personal development knowledge. And uh, little did I know that I actually created a workshop on goal setting, which actually aligned itself and sat really nicely under the coaching area. Um, and it was then I really found coaching just after that and started exploring and realized there were actually people that were doing this type of work and, and earning a living out of it. And, um, and from there, just started the process of, of putting the bricks uh, on the ground and starting to, to build my knowledge and expand um, into, and then into the area of men's work, mm. uh, which was a, a resource. I got into men's work off, off the back of the next challenge, I, big challenge I had, I suppose. I came back from traveling after a year uh, backpacking it around the world, amazing experience, but reintegrating into uh, what you would call normal life here was a real challenge for me. And um, I don't know, it's very difficult to go to family and friends and say you're upset because you're not traveling around the world anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've, got, you've got to go to work and spend like eight hours in an office. It was it was a difficult period, but I found men's groups. I found a very right excellent men's service called Men Speak, okay. uh, which is run by my mentor, Kenny De Cruz. Mm -hmm. And, um, and th this, is, this is men sitting in a, in a circle just openly talking, mm -hmm. um, talking real, speaking real. And I found a support network and a place where I could really get a lot of my issues and challenges off my chest. Okay. And, but, I'm just going to interrupt you there because yeah. um, I want to delve a little bit deeper into those types of services. Definitely. But um, when you've spoken about the college that you worked at, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm feeling that you worked with young people, was it, or adults? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, well, Princess Trust is, uh, target is young adults. Right, so yeah. I was, I, I was working with a group, actually a group of men. They don't normally do groups of men, but they did in this case. Uh, 16 to 24 and we took this group of 12 men through young men through a 12-week self-development program right. they've got a program called the team program and what it is it's 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 basically teaching these young people skills um, by doing rather than there is a, a bit of classroom stuff but a lot of it's getting out there into yeah. the field and um, running things like community projects there's a residential where we, we went away for a week in, in week two with the team and did all uh, challenges and exercises out in the, in the, the forest at this, this residential place. And um, it really opened my eyes to... Yeah, to, yeah. To what, it was an amazing experience. I can imagine. I mean, because this is a thing about education. I mean, I myself, I'm a tutor. I've worked in further education settings. And okay. um, a recent experience um, earlier this year in a classroom with 16 to 18 year olds and talking to some of the young males, um, it was clear to me that that classroom setting wasn't nourishing them it wasn't nurturing them and they actually needed something hands-on but they were yeah. forced to sit in a classroom when actually um education isn't just about you know the numbers and the writing you know and there is an element of life education that is missing from um these educational establishments so the, you know the work you did there i mean i can imagine how highly valuable well received it was by the young people but um, did, did they take it up immediately were they you know did they buy into it or was it sort of like trying to encourage and motivate people to do that what was the the, the, the reception well, of it the one thing that was good about the course is they weren't put on the course they 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 chose to go on to it and so they were there on their own merit and they knew that somewhere with inside them that they 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 wanted to to change and they wanted to 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 put 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 something together and, and try and try and the main end end goal for um, for a lot of the Princess Trust work is is, is full time employment or back into education and uh, uh, quite a lot of the young people they, they they knew that you could tell something had shifted and they were they were hungry for some change so they were on the course by their own merit but um, it is a challenging course and I, I remember the first day very well I was there all bright eyed and sort of <laughs> I'm very professional I've been yes. sort of, find myself in being quite professional and uh, nine o'clock I think it was start time and there was two out of twelve in the room <laughs> right. and I, I actually went through a, a, a quite a learning experience myself um, with my ex because I, I projected my expectations onto them at first okay. and, and got left short and what I started to realize uh, and this is particularly prevalent in coaching about building bridges mm -hmm. so 
it might be that, that one of the young people who is, who is continuously late, uh, the first step would be for him to phone me to tell me he was going to be late. Mm. And, and that would be the, the trigger point. And then when he knew he needed to phone me, he then subconsciously then started arriving on time. But mm. when I was getting the phone calls, that was progress. Um, but initially I found that difficult because I was projecting my own expectations onto them and um, I struggled a bit with uh, with that. But getting to know them as well, initially I I, I, I didn't under, see, understand some of the, the home situations with some of these young adults which were which were very challenging and um, I, 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 I quickly realised that it, it was that I shouldn't judge necessarily a, a book by its cover so they've come in late so they're disrespecting me but then when I actually sit down and have a conversation with this young person he's yeah. just had huge issues at home he's living on an estate he's got mm. no sleep mm. because of something that's been going on with his family so yeah, I, I learned a lot throughout the process. Yeah. Um, and, but the ones that made it through, not all of them made it through the course. It's a tough course, and some of them just couldn't handle that, couldn't handle it. But we got nine out of the twelve through, which is which is a good hit rate, seventy five percent, and, and yeah. huge value off the back of it. Any any coaches interested in youth coaching should definitely have a look at the team program and at the Princess Trust generally. Mm-hmm. Um, they also run a mentoring program. I'm a trained mentor with them now as well. And that, that's, that's very rewarding. And that's a little bit more different. That's one-to-one. So Okay, that's fantastic. That, you're doing great work, Clive. And, I mean, I'm excited because it's actually um, geared towards men. Um, as you can tell, I'm a female. <laughs> and when I, I, I actually um, go through my stats to look at where my clients are from, what really jumps out to me is that um, a high percentage, 80% of my client group are females. Mm. And I've wondered, you know, well... Is it because I'm a woman that men don't want to come to me? Or, but I have had some male clients, so I know that there is a need. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what I want to um, go into now is um, you've mentioned your uh, mentor um, from Men Speak, that group yep. that helped you to find a channel. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the next question, I'm particularly interested in the Men's Action Project. What was the inspiration for setting that up? It was, it was two things, really. Uh, the first of all, uh, at Men Speak, I found a place where uh, men could speak openly um, and in confidence and um, and be real about what was going on. And um, in a, in that group environment, what I saw a lot of the conversations at, at Men Speak were about things that w- had happened previously or were going on at that point in time. And uh, what I what I thought would be uh, what I saw as an opportunity in a space like that to, to what about a group that instead of of, of working at, in that place is more the being place actually uh, looks at the future and looks at more about doing and taking the um, I've, I've always been involved in um, in sports teams with groups of guys playing football a lot and and other things but uh, taking that that kind of space and the camaraderie and the 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 inspiration that can come from a group of men or women um, and and overlaying group coaching principles in order to um, provide challenge and a place of accountability for men to to walk their talk and that's the slogan for the men's action project men who walk their talk so so when a man says oh I, you know I want to do that or I'd like to do that um, I'm the when guy who says well when are you gonna do it what is the first step and hey here's a whole other group of here's a group of guys that all have some things that they want to go after. So um, it, it was it was providing that place, and that's where the idea came from um, okay. originally. Excellent. So, and that was, um, was that three years ago that you set that up? It's about three, three and a half years ago, yeah. Right, okay. So what sort of activities um, do the men um, participate in? So it's, it's changed, uh, changed forms over the years, naturally, through trial and error, but primarily... Um, a group will be uh, two hours long and uh, we'll begin with an icebreaker to break break the mood and um, I run them in the evening so uh, people be- got the guys potentially coming from work um, and there might be some new men in the room as well so I run an icebreaker like a, a uh, something like a, a quick word game or something that gets them to, to introduce themselves in different ways like uh, ask, ask particular questions off the wall questions and mm. um, can you give and me an example? Uh, Rebecca, yeah. uh, you're, you're a wrestler coming into the ring. What's your name and what's your finishing move? Oh, 
quickly. Enormous completer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was on cool. the spot, yeah. On the spot. So I might delve in there. I mean, that's that's just an example. But right. uh, okay. yeah, what music? What music would you have? What would be your theme music coming in? Um, it would be. Um, I've got the power. I've got the power. Yeah. Okay. Let's see that. That tells me a little bit about you. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to ask what in this recording, but you, <laughs> you, you, you can share if you wish. Yeah. Well, it would be, so, so yeah, that's just reveal something yeah. about you and later on the meeting, I might say, Rebecca, tell me about I've Got the Power. What is it about that song? What right. music are you into? And it just, it just breaks the ice. Yeah. I mean, that's. What I mean, doing. it sounds like fun and it's building up rapport and it's getting people to feel at ease, isn't it? In, it is, yeah. yeah. It is, and I. I I, for me, it's like warming up. It's like we're gonna we're, like an exercise. You don't just jump on and start sprinting. You warm up. So that's what that's there for. And I use that sometimes in my one-to-one coaching. I don't dive straight in and start grilling them on on you know work what goals and what's been happening. The first five minutes is always well, let's just what's going on. You know. Yeah. You see, yeah. Even if, you know, did you see the football last night or how how things you know? And then we move into it. So yeah, that, right. that would be that would be the start. And then we get into the the kind of nitty gritty of the meeting. So. Um, in the picture that I've sent you, you'll see a picture of me sitting on a chair. Yes, it it, um, it looks like you're sitting on um, what's it, um, Joseph Te- Technicolor Dreamcoat? <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite, quite colourful, isn't it? That is that is that is the not quite Rebecca. That is the throne of accountability. Oh, okay. <laughs> Safe ground. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. What I get the men to do is sit on the chair, and everyone. It's very. I've got. You see, I've got a stopwatch on. Okay. So everything, because it's group coaching, um, time is critical, mm-hmm. maximizing the time and making sure everyone gets the same amount of space to speak and, and get their time. So I use the stopwatch and the, the men either present their goals or projects to the group if it's a first meeting or they will then uh, or be reporting back on the progress since the last meeting. Mm-hmm. Superb. I can imagine that a lot gets done, you know, it's, in that context, in that environment. Yeah, the key, the key to that particular part of the exercise is that the men are given the chance to respond on their own. So it's questions and answers. The questions comes from the audience mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't develop into a conversation. And, and what, so, so initially, the man in the chair will get the opportunity to answer the question themselves and find their own answers before later on in the meeting where there's a mastermind type session where where there's a lot of conversation and have you considered this and have you considered that? Right, it's got you. Superb. It sounds great, Um, you know, not just for men, but for women too, as you said earlier. Think big for a moment. If you could create your best life, how would this look? What if, in just 30 minutes, you had a plan of action to get closer to your dream? Make the impossible possible and claim your free session today. Visit www.satellitelifecoaching.com now. Usually, we struggle through life alone, with outdated beliefs and self-sabotaging actions that bring the same results. How different would it be if you had a personal success coach who helped you make the shift and create a plan for happiness? You will fearlessly align your values, achieve important goals, and reframe your perspective when you have coaching with me. Email Rebecca at info at satellitelifecoaching.com. Book your free discovery session and change your life. I really want to touch on um, the perception of um, men because it's actually very easy to focus on the external idea of what we think being a man is all about. So, for example, you know, we can assume or we might assume that a man should be strong, he should be confident, self-assured, he should be in control and be a protector. But what I want to ask you is... I mean, I, I, I don't know because I, I'm not a man, you know, so I need to ask a man, how do men cope with the pressure of being a man in society these days? Because there is a lot of pressure on, isn't there, for a man? There's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure on for a man um, and for a woman as well. 
Um, well, there is, but you see, the thing about women, like I said, you know, I mean, uh, my experience is that, you know, 80% of my clients are females. And mm-hmm. generally, I feel, because I don't know for sure, that women tend to do a lot of self development work, you know, seek out coaches, go to counseling, you know, go and get therapy or whatever it is that will help yep. them along their journey. I'm yep. not quite sure if it's the same for a man. It's, it hasn't been traditionally. And what, so if you look back in time, if you look at kind of traditional male role models, the uh, Rambo or uh, James Bond or um, Arnold Schwarzenegger um, out there doing it on their own, the man's out there doing it on his own. And the, that is the kind of um, potential societal pre-programming that's gone in. So it's not necessarily, historically, hasn't necessarily been natural for a man to actually say, do you know what, before I try doing it on my own, I'll ask for help because I know if I ask for help, I'm going to potentially get this done quicker and I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to be able to share my issues and I'm going to feel better about it. So um, historically, though, that hasn't been the case. So it's not necessarily the most natural thing for a man to do. But in recent times, I mean, if you look at anyone, and I mean anyone in the limelight or anyone who's, who's successful and at the top of their game, they have a team of people around them. I mean, sportsmen are a perfect example. Like Andy Murray, he's got his nutritionist, he's got his coach, he's got his uh, mental game coach, he's got someone teaching him on technique. He has got a team around him. Yes. And what, what is slowly happening is uh, men, a lot of men are starting to, some men are starting to wake up and say, do you know what, the, the what, and especially the way women have come on as well, like they really are tearing it up. What am I missing here? And it's, it's like I need help. I need I need to I need a coach. I need someone. I need to join a team. I I, I need help. And, and by doing so, I'm going to propel myself. Um. So historically, maybe not the most natural thing for a guy to do, but as probably in recent years, there's been this shift towards, um, especially men of a younger generation, actually. Saying yeah, yeah, I, I, I want a coach. I, I need a coach with this. I need some help with this, and not being afraid to step up and, and ask. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I'm just thinking about um, a session I had today actually with a male client, and um, it was a great coaching session. And mm-hmm. we were talking about his development since coming into this round of coaching. And one of the yeah. things that he said was, "Wow, you know, I've developed in confidence." And mm-hmm. it's sort of like, um, you know, it was a great realization for him, but it was, you know, there should never be any assumptions that because you're a man, you know, you mustn't, um, you know, cry or you mustn't show your emotions or what, or, or what have you. You know, I think that coaching is a great intervention. And really, the reason why I really wanted to speak to you was to just spread that message out there that, you know, mm-hmm. men <laughs> need help too, really. You know, yep. so leading on from that, then, um, and we've spoken about um, yes, um, men are seeking out coaching more these days as mm-hmm. a way to cope with the pressures of society. What mm-hmm. might be some of the common issues that clients, male clients, come to you with to receive coaching for? Uh, I uh, hold all sorts of different issues. Some of them um, may be very practical like uh, I'm coaching a client at the moment around clearing out his flat and clearing out the garage mm-hmm. and um, one I've coached a client on, on uh, fixing a bike was one of his goals building a bike okay. from someone. good yeah. accountability yeah. or it might be something more um, uh, in the area of for example social confidence mm-hmm. uh, that's something I've worked on been with it might be something in business um, and something around career and it, it, it really does vary across the board, Rebecca, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, but one thing I will say, and this is, this is true, in the, particularly why this is why I love group coaching, okay? Just because two men have got different goals in completely different areas, more often than not, the underlying principles that are going to be required for both men to realize success are the same. Mm. And so that when, when they're reporting back to each other and seeing, seeing the progress on the chair, the fact that some that one guy is making great progress with losing weight or swimming this distance that he'd like to swim or whatever it is, then lifts the other man out. Do you know what? This guy is killing it in what he's doing. I'm I'm going to up my game in my 
uh, developing mm-hmm. my website or uh, or something else. Right. So, yeah. So it's that collective um, tribe, if you like. Yeah. Supportive tribe. A, a good friend of mine um, would use this um, saying a lot: "Iron sharpens iron." <laughs> That's, I've heard that one. Yep, yeah, heard yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's great. So, um, I because I'm inquisitive, Clive, yes. <laughs> you've, mentioned, you've mentioned a few things that um, a man might seek coaching for. Um, yep. From my experience, it's not uncommon for a woman to seek coaching about relationships. Is it the same right. for men? I wouldn't say no, but in... The men that I've coached so far, that hasn't been one of the primary topics. Um, yeah, I, I'd say uh, potentially more around initiating relationships, so confidence around approaching women um, and getting sort of involved in, 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 in initiating potential future relationships, but not not primarily relationships. I see. Interesting. But, <laughs> okay, mm. okay. I know there are men's coaches that have coached in that area and right. uh, one, one that even specialises in it. Oh, so. I see. Yes, yes, I know one as well, yes. Okay, so um, I want to talk to you about um, prior to taking up coaching with yourself or even prior to joining the Men's Action Project. When a man might hear of what you're doing and the great work there, how receptive are men generally to seeing coaching as a perfect intervention? I have had this conversation for hours with different people working in the men's arena. Right. And um, there's the old saying, you can take a donkey to water, but you can't make him drink it. Yeah. And one of the the, the challenges, um, partic- for a women's coach, but particularly for a men's coach, is basically you can see the guy needs coaching support he's all the signs are there uh, getting convincing him that this is something that would help him because for him to just for him to say oh I, I need a coach means I'm saying I need help and that might not necessarily as I say fit with historical programming and he, he, he traditionally might be more comfortable working it out on his own which only leads to more potential problems so Bridging that gap between a man that needs coaching and then him coming in and receiving the coaching is something that I'm continually trying to sh- to shorten. Um, whether that's running physical activity-based events, mm-hmm. so I'm, sometimes they're not don't even know they're being coached. It's like we're going to go climbing and we'll do some coaching stuff. Right. Oh, I'd like to go climbing, and then once they're climbing, I'll get them talking about their goals. I go, what challenges have you got at the moment? Softly, softly, yeah. and then suddenly it all opens up. Right. And so, I'm you look it's still playing at the moment with sort of tools and techniques and ways of kind of packaging coaching. Um, and what I also want to say is, it's not if you've got a coach now, you're not throwing the bow, but your masculinity out with the bathwater. You're you're just getting some help in this area. So, um, I, so the guy in the pub drinking a beer watching football like I'm the guy in that I'm in the pub having a beer watching the football sometimes but I'm also sometimes with my coach um, delving deeply into into some of the the barriers that I'm getting with some of the things that I want to achieve mm-hmm. so it's making coaching okay and what I generally find is once if you get a man who's ready for coaching in suddenly the light goes the light when they're on the chair the light bulb goes on and and it's it's magical because suddenly for the first time maybe in a long time they are being a listen to properly listen to about what what it is what do you really want and to be listened to and and sometimes um some men were like icebergs sometimes I, I can be like it as well under the surface there's so much going on and suddenly it comes to the surface and it all comes out so right. but yeah bridging that gap is one of the challenges of of, mm. of my work well it sounds like you're doing a great job where that's concerned clive <laughs> yeah yeah so um in terms of um the men who are in your group who come to you for coaching i mean i'm based in the west midlands so i i, I have observed you know there are different trends you know um, nationally depending on where we, we are living um i see london as um, a progressive place but I'm interested to know if you've noticed any trends in the demographics of men who are involved in what you're doing there who are receivers of the service um, in terms of age or culture say yeah I mean I've 
I've coached men in their early 20s in the group going up to their sort of early to mid 50s. So, um, and when you get a good group, when you get a mixed group like that and they're all on the same wavelength, it can be, it can be really good because there's that kind of sharing between the generations that can go on. A trend that I have noticed is that the younger generations potentially are more receptive to coaching uh, maybe because they don't have some of the traditional values as uh, as built into their DNA. Um, I also find that men men who have already been exposed to personal development and to men's groups. So some of my clients have come through uh, men speaking through men's groups because they're already receptive to men's groups. Then slipping into a mat meeting is that they're used to the space. If that right. Makes sense. So, yeah. 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 So, they're more receptive if they've, they've been exposed to uh, men's work previously because there are there's men's work in a number of areas, but um, that is some that is a trend that I've definitely noted. They're they're far, they're far more receptive to the work. Okay, so the message there is that um, you know you're running a great group. There are other groups. You know, there's men speak that you've mentioned. If someone yep. feels actually I'm struggling by myself and hearing this today. Um, I'm going to find out what help I can get from these groups. Then there are places that you can go to. It's just a matter of seeking them out, really. So um, if somebody's standing in that, in that space at the point of being interested to find out more, what would you say about why a man should consider coaching in particular as a great tool to assist them rather than merely having a chat with mates down the pub or talking to a girlfriend or someone close to them? One of the reasons that um, men speak in particular, and now MAP's the same, I, I love uh, these groups, is the fact that you're getting honest feedback from people that are seeing you for the first time, potentially. So um, there's no... I don't know if I can swear on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you can't. Sorry. Okay. Well, actually, there's, you can do. There's no. Like, there's but... no. There's no. Um, uh, Bravo, Sierra. <laughs> Still, I say, you're, you're okay. Phonetic, yeah. Phonetic yeah. images, and you're suddenly you're getting a fresh pair of eyes, not who who, who are calling, and 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 they will, uh, you will potentially get feedback that you've never had before because if you do go to a, a best friend or a girlfriend or a parent with this stuff, then they're all, they're already preloaded with your history and are potentially going to give you the advice from that space mm-hmm. you might need at that time is, is a fresh pair of eyes basically and someone seeing you off the street to say do you know what this is something that that, that is a real issue or this is this is a way potentially forward for you yeah so um and by could by staying in the same groups you those blind spots aren't necessarily getting picked off um, but being in an environment, a space like that, it, it can be it can be like, wow, you, do you know what you're right? Uh, do you know what you're so right? And I, 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 I've needed that feedback for such a long time. And I remember feeling that way myself. I have done on a number of occasions. I'm involved in the men speak groups myself. I go to a group once a month and speak my truth. And um, yeah, it's it's that it's that feedback, and you're going to get that feedback from a coach or from a guy in a men's group that you won't necessarily get from a a friend or a family member. Mm, so it's totally objective, non-judgmental, mm-hmm. and very liberating. Yes. I would say, yes. Okay. We are going to take a short break now, and we will That's be fine. back in a few um, seconds. Okay. Relax in the coaching lounge and engage with compelling, motivational speakers. Be prepared to transform your inner world to shape your outer world through empowering discussions. Tune into thecoachinglounge.co.uk now. Usually, we struggle through life alone, with outdated beliefs and self-sabotaging actions that bring the same results. How different would it be if you had a personal success coach who helped you make the shift and create a plan for happiness? You will fearlessly align your values achieve important goals, and reframe your perspective when you have coaching with me. Email Rebecca at info at satellitelifecoaching.com. Book your free discovery session 
and change your life. Thank you for joining me in the coaching lounge. I'm Rebecca Gordon and I'm here with my guest Clive Maxheath, um, who is the co-founder and leader, leader of the Men's Action Project. And um, in this segment of the show, um, I'm going to find out a little bit more about the other initiative um, that Clive's involved with. So Clive, um, I met you at a meetup group, which was Coachpreneurs. Tell yes. me about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Coachpreneurs. Um, Coachpreneurs started uh, back in early 2014, and it was actually started by a, oh, I can't remember her, her name now. A young lady, really, really, really good, good, good lady. She started Coachpreneur, set up the meetup, and she ran over a period of five months five sort of presentation-based meetings with um, Evgenia was her name actually. She's nice. um, she works, she coaches in the the, the uh, health and doctor area, but she set up uh, Coachpreneurs and she ran these five meetups and. Um, she had uh, with presentations, and I went to one of her meetups. So I went to a coachpreneurs meetup as a guest myself. And then, for whatever reason, uh, things were happening in her life. She stepped down, and I was already on meetup running my men's action project, and had been to one of her her, her meetups and saw an opportunity to um, to get involved in, and create a community for coaches. Um, for myself as well to sort of network and and meet meet other coaches and share experiences and so both myself and another very top coach Roger Dennison yes Roger's going to be on the show very soon is it he's he's brilliant he's brilliant and um he he said that he would like to so we basically took the meetup off her as a co-leaders um but what happened in that time that there wasn't anything nothing happened on the meetup for about four months so by the time we had picked up the meetup the kind of momentum had faded so we started in October 2014 and have since then been slowly um, putting energy back into coachpreneurs. We've had, um, we've had, I run a group coaching event, we've had speak, a few speakers in and we've run some, we call them coaching corners where we just sit down in a coffee shop for an hour and, and share, share things. So um, over time, it's, we've slowly sort of got, got into our own groove. We've done some marketing through some of the social media to, to get more people in the door. And we've now kind of got what I consider our group of coachpreneurs that are attracted to our offering. Right. Um, and in recent times, uh, we, there was spec for another, because it was quite a lot of work and both of us are busy, busy guys. We, we put it out to the community to recruit a, a third co-leader and a good friend and top coach, Roman Ivanov, mm-hmm. stepped up. And he has come on as a third co-leader. So between the three of us now, we uh, we run the events. And what it's done is given us more um, opportunities to run more more meetups and different t- kinds of meetups. So recently, I've been we've been running virtual uh, Google Hangout masterminds, which I know uh, you were part of yeah. uh, last month. <laughs> yes, it was, was fantastic, actually. Yeah, as well as the in-person meetings. Yes. And um, and that, that that's coming on leaps and bounds. I think we're like a member or two away from being 200 on wow. the meetup site, which is which is great. And and we're now getting this kind of core group of coaches who are who are who are quite active on the on the on the meetup site and and at the events and. And um, yeah, it's been mm. it's been a, a a bit of a a bit of a journey. I hate the word journey. Actually, I'm a I'm a Lord of the Rings kind of guy. So let's say a quest. Okay. <laughs> rather than a journey, I prefer the word quest. Yes. I'm more of a Game of Thrones person. Oh. And and so yeah, we're we're going to continue with that. There's going to be a couple of meetups hitting the site in the next week. Okay, I should and, look out uh, for those. I might. Yeah. Any coaches listening? Um, because we've got the virtual meetups going as well. It's not just uh, London based. Um, yeah find us on on the meetup site and and join up and and there's a, a newsletters and right. uh, opportunity discussion group areas and, yeah. and a lot going on there stuff Lo- going on lots Twitter. of great activity there yeah and i know that you're very um hot on um the marketing you know on social media which is fantastic but, yeah um, yeah um i mean i must say that um i felt great when I returned from the meetup um, when I met you guys in London a few weeks back and Brilliant. slightly disheartened because I thought oh you know I can't go to every single meeting it's so far away <laughs> you know I'm just thinking how can I keep in touch with everyone but you know we've got the connection and the Google Hangout I was very excited about that because even though we're so far so actually 
you know, living in these times and the virtual um, connections we can have, um, yep. you know, we need to make the most of them really. So I would encourage people, if you're not in London, but you still want to find out what's going on, check out Coachpreneurs, you know, join up um, and take part in the Google Hangouts if you can't get down there. Um, but I missed the last meetup. I think it was the last one. There was um, Greenwich, meet, Greenwich, walking in Greenwich, was it? Yep. How, how was that? Did you go to that one? The leadership walk, it, it, it didn't happen in the oh. end. It's like, it's I, the middle of the, the, yeah. the um, holiday season here, right. and we had uh, one, one, one lady got held up at work, another one um, had had something going on with her child. So we've put that on the shelf, and I'm going to be running that sort of October, November time. Okay. I've got the material for that there, so that will yeah. be coming back on the box uh, yeah. in the fall. Because I couldn't make that one, and um, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that I'll have an op- another opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay, so this is a big question now, okay? Well, <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> okay, so this okay. is it, and this is um, a question based on exactly what you've been talking about and the support that you offer. So if there's someone who's listening right now, who um, is interested in hearing more or who knows of a male friend, a family member or colleague who would benefit from an initial chat with you about the Men's Action Project or coaching, what would be a good way for the person to initiate a conversation with a man about why they might want to seek out a coach? So, di- sorry, let me just be clear. It, yeah. them directly with me or speaking with their friend? Well, I'm just thinking, you know, um, I think really, yes, if people want to contact you, if they're, you know, able to meet, attend because they're physically in London, or if they want to connect with you by phone or Skype or whatever, or if somebody it knows that there's someone who would benefit from coaching per se, yeah. Yep. So yep. yes, there are two different arms to the question. I mm. mean, you can answer them both if you if you'd like to. Yeah, I think the the first the place to start is definitely the meetup site itself. Mm-hmm. Um, the, it's the Men's Action Project on meetup.com. If, if if the listener isn't aware, that is a a kind of social network that is has been established specifically for groups. And um, there's groups for all sorts on there. So it's a great resource generally. Right. But, um, yeah, go, go to the Men's Action Project. Check out the site. On the site, there are, uh, if you click on the pages yeah. page, there are, that's where I've got archives containing personal development tools, including books, videos, um, podcasts to listen to. So for a guy that, that, that's not quite ready to, to kind of go hands-on, with the coaching, but wants to just, just kind of to, to sort of test the water around what's out there and, and how personal development stuff can help. There's a number of resources on there they can they can listen to or watch. Okay. Um, so someone can actually, um, if it, like um, if I have a brother, yeah, yeah, and I'm thinking, well, my brother is just not going to call up or contact you to say, actually, Clive, um, someone's heard this interview and they recommend that I contact you. Yeah. But they need to be, as you say, um, the bridge needs to be built, you know, to lead into it gently, for example. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to sort of like tease out a little bit more what mm-hmm. might be the thing to say in a conversation to my brother, for example, or my partner um, about what they hear, what, what they've heard today and um, why they should consider this as an intervention what might be the right words for someone to use in conversation with someone who, who they identify needs help? Okay. So the first thing I would say is, is, is ask that question. Where, is there, where, what area is, is there a challenge or a block at the moment? Because we've had this conversation and I can see there's a challenge here. And, and then I would say... Wouldn't it be good if you could potentially get to gr- get together with a group of, of like-minded individuals who are also struggling in or having challenges in an area that you could share those challenges and and then maybe uh, plot ways and consider ways of moving forward with that? And then they would say, yeah, hopefully they would say, yeah, that does sound <laughs> yeah. something that would be of interest. Right. And then you would say, I know a coach called Clive Maxey who runs an initiative called the Men's Action Project. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, here's a website. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. If you're not quite ready to check out the website yet, there are there are some. Uh, I definitely would. A book was the way that books were the way that I got into this. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely point him towards a book such like the Seven Habits of Effective People. Um, like um, there's a couple of other good books, a good, a good books for men out there. I mean, anything Anthony Robbins is always yeah. uh, quite generic. It's very good. Yeah. Um, it depends. It depends what the issue is. I mean, if they're really struggling, and it's more more of a maybe counselling type service that they need, that kind of um, interjection, then then that I would I would potentially suggest men speak um, and just say, hey, the, here's a place where men meet up and just talk. And and here here's here's something for you. On there's a, another very good website for men called Inside Man. Okay. It's run by a couple of great guys, Glenn Paul and another guy called Dan, and they are very active in the men's community. And they publish articles on men's issues and uh, stories. And I published a couple of articles on there. Uh, one about my boxing. I did a white collar boxing match last year. Oh. Uh, there's a story there, and one also about how. I, basically, the story that you've heard today about how the Men's Action Project has came. I'm just topping and tailing one about my mid twenties crisis as well. Okay. So, if they they want to just if they're interested and they want to just start reading about experiences through other men that might be going through a similar thing, then Inside Man's a great place to start. Excellent, superb. Mm. Okay. Mm. And um, the last question from me today, um, Clive. Is I'm interested to know um, some of the success stories. So, what success stories have you had? If you can tell us one, or a few, maybe. Oh, there's a, there's a few. <laughs> just, just give us one that stands out then. Oh, okay. I this was actually a a friend um, who is still a very good friend. Um, he'll be on my stag do this weekend. Right. And um, he he needed. I could see that he was he was struggling in certain areas, and he needed some coaching support. And he came through and did six months at the Men's Action Project. And one of his goals, he, he was a, driving was a massive thing for him. I mean, and it really, I mean, he's since had a baby girl. It massively held him back. Um, his wife had to drive everywhere. And this is a guy in his early 30s and, and not putting any judgment on ages to learn to drive. But obviously a lot of people learn um, when they're a lot younger. It was a massive thing for him. It hung, up, it hung up, hung over him. I could see it like a shadow for years. And we got him in the Men's Action Project, and he slowly got his papers in for his um, what's the academic? Oh, test the you, theory, the driving theory, the theory yes. test. Yeah, he got him past the theory oh, test. Great. And he, he, the first lesson was a massive thing, and he kept coming. Oh, I haven't got it yet. And then he, he did the first lesson, and um, earlier this year, uh, actually, sort of earlier, it was last year. He passed his driving test, oh, um, and that was it. Was it was it was it was an amazing thing. Not only because I, I, I obviously you had a part of witnessing and supporting him through that experience, but but also because it was a good friend to see him come yes, out the other side. Yes. Um, yeah, and um, encouragement um, with the group and accountability. Um, yeah. Key things, I think, there weren't they? I mean, the men, the male ego. It can do. It can. It can. It can. It can be damaging. It can do all sorts of things. But sometimes, with the men's action project, the male ego can be a real tool for good. And uh, I, I, one of my one of my men gave up. He had struggled giving up smoking for years and years and years. Came to the men's action project, got his his uh, butt kicked a little bit. A bit of, <laughs> I call it positive pressure, right? Yes. Positive pressure from like-minded men. Gave up smoking. Now hasn't smoked since. Absolutely. Um, Another guy published uh, his first album on on uh, on iTunes. Okay. Um, and uh, went from literally nothing to three months later turning out his first album on iTunes. Wow, that's so amazing. Yeah, I mean, and it, it, it can be huge things. As uh, it could be, one guy got promoted and has completely changed jobs. It, and yeah. it, but but it's, it's small and big things. Mm. You know, another guy got another guy got his, he he hung up his curtains and got his loft tidied up, okay. and that yeah. that can be as 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 big. Uh, an, ach an achievement and open up all sorts of things. Absolutely, um, it's all about momentum. I'm preaching to the choir. I'm you, sure. But, but you, I mean, yes, in a way. But actually, it's a point worth um, really making um, a point to say 
that sometimes think okay you know coaching is about big things but really it's the small Mm -hmm. things that can make a difference in someone's life you know um, something as you know small as creating a space in your bedroom so that you're fresh and you're free and you're alive and you, you know you can get up and do some really productive things you know so it's not just the big things that people need to think that they have to seek a coach for. It can be some, you know, things that they've procrastinated on or, you know, actually, as you've said, physical things, you know, um, tangible, practical things. So uh, um, because I, I'm not sure what it's like in London, but I think certainly um, in the West Midlands, coaching is becoming more well known now. Mm-hmm. But I'm not yeah. too sure if people really understand exactly how coaching can make a massive difference in no. every facet of their life, not just work, you know, not just on the social arena, but actually just if you're, you want to live well in your own home. Would you agree with that, I think? <laughs> I, think I think I think there can be, and I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience here, uh, an idea that I, I don't need a coach because I can be accountable, accountable to myself and that's okay. And then what can often happen is stuff can subconsciously or consciously just slip by but because there's no there's no one saying, "Hey, Clive, didn't you say you were gonna do this?" Yeah. Um, it, 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 it can it can over time. It might that week. Okay, I get to get out and go for a run, or I didn't um, send those emails I was gonna send. But if anyone's read the book, The Slight Edge, over time those things equate to huge, life changing. Uh, yeah. things yes. so yes. I mean yeah. I've got a guy at the moment who's and, and often as well in, in a busy life I mean I'm sure the Midlands is the same it's crazy everyone's busy mm. the little things slip Absolutely. so I've got a, I've got a client at the moment he's checking in with me daily on on 15 minutes meditation going for a walk and drinking two litres of water mm. and because because he's, he's he's busy and those things slip yeah but, yeah it, and, but those things are huge exactly if, absolutely because I, I know if I don't if I don't stretch in the morning if I don't drink water my water before I get to work I'm 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 still seeing the rise so Great. It's, uh, yeah. Good. A gr- Good great. Point. Strong message there. Excellent. So yeah. what we're going to do now, Clive, is just um, I'd like you to just share your contact details so that um, anyone who's loving what they hear in this podcast and they want to reach out to you, that they can do that. Um, I know you've got um, links on all of the social media platforms. Can you just let us know what those are, please? Yep, the the main two sites I'm active on, I'm, I'm, I'm around a lot um, out of the house, so I'm on Twitter quite a bit, at Clive Maxey, that's M-A-X-H-E-A-T-H. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, you'll find me on there, and there's also a, a Men's Action Project Facebook page, so if, if you connect with me on there, I can point you in the direction of that also, and there's information that goes on there. Uh, also LinkedIn, that's my kind of office space, so... Um, if you're on if you're on LinkedIn, you can find me on there. And Meetup obviously is the main one. So um, if you look, if you're intrigued by it, it's Meetup is free to join. So um, if you're intrigued uh, about Men Speak or Map or anything we talked about today, go on the Meetup site, have a little look around, um, check out the pages, the archives there. There's loads of tools on there just to check out and and join. It's free. It's 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 no uh, there's nothing to lose. So um, go onto the meetup site, the Men's Action Project. Join. There's nothing to lose. And once you once you're hooked in, you'll start getting the monthly newsletters packed full of content. Um, I'm gonna be. If you're thinking, oh, it's in London, I can't make it down there. In the, I've been over the summer. I've been trialing uh, virtual services. Mm-hmm. So I've been trialing different services, and I've got the one that I'm gonna use. So there's gonna be on the Men's Action Project site not only coachpreneurs now. Um, virtual groups so I'm going to start running some virtual group masterminds in the autumn Excellent. if, if you're a coach and you're interested in coachpreneurs we're on twitter at coachpreneurs touch base there on the meetup site again it's free to join loads going on there and once you're on there you'll, you'll, you'll stay updated and we put out a quarterly newsletter there uh, likewise we've also got the facebook page as well um, and both Roger Dennison and Roman Ivanov excellent coaches in their own right are are on Facebook uh, and on Meetup as well. Okay, excellent, superb. Thank you so much for that. And the final words, what's a message that you'd like to um, say to a man who's listening right now? Your final message. My 
final message is that in asking for help, you don't need to. You're not throwing away all of uh, all of what being a man's about. There's 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 the, the historical kind of alpha male, king of the jungle um, kind of guy, and then there's the opposite end of the scale, like the highly emotional, sensitive guy. Um, but there's a space in the middle, and asking for help doesn't mean that you're particularly at the the alpha male end. You're losing that. It's it's actually the the way forward and the way that you're going to accelerate your growth because um, a man getting support from something like a men speak or a map or some elsewhere where and who's on his own um, I can guarantee through experience and I, I've been on my own uh, for, for a number of years um, that um, engaging in in groups getting good te- a team of guys around you all walk in their talk is going to accelerate your growth and um, accelerate your fulfillment you're going to be happier um, and you're gonna and you're gonna be on um, on on point with regards to who you are at the deepest level. So, yeah, sh- connect with Map and say, hey, uh, this is something I want to do, and it can be anything. And and, mm-hmm. and why not? Sounds, there's, nothing to, there's nothing to lose. And we're awesome. all and we're all afraid as well. Um, yeah. We're all yeah. Uh, we're all fearful. We're not. Then um, you're not human, or you're not pushing the boundary enough. <laughs> very true. Very true. Clive Max Heath. It's been a pleasure to be with you in the Coaching Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Rebecca. It's been an absolute blast. Um, And just to sum up with regards to uh, the work that you do with the Coaching Lounge and some of the work, obviously, uh, touching base with you at the meet-up scene, some of the work you're doing, it's excellent. So I really appreciate this opportunity and I look forward to to connecting and and sharing in in experiences and for our own development in the future, Rebecca. It's been great. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Clive. Take your place in The Coaching Lounge. Be inspired by discussions with motivational guests, compelling speakers, key people of influence and models of success. Learn unique processes, strategies and tips that will transform your life. Tune into previous episodes on www.thecoachinglounge.co.uk. Like our page on Facebook via The Coaching Lounge. Follow us on Twitter at Satellite Coach. Thank you for joining your host, Rebecca Gordon, in The Coaching Lounge. Tune in, relax, engage and transform your life now. Now.